Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Tanke from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 106 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a retrograde crossing through an epicardial collateral followed by externalization and exchange for an undergrade guide wire. The patient was a young woman that presented with unstable angina and was found to have three vessel disease. It was decided to attempt multivessel percutaneous vascularization, so she underwent PCI of the LED and the circumflex. However, she had a right coronary CTO that could not be recanalized, and she was referred to achieve complete revascularization. These were the images for the initial presentation. She did have a CTO of the proximal right coronary artery with a small marginal branch originating at the proximal cap. She did have significant lesion in the circumflex as well as the mid LAD, which were successfully treated with um, drug eluting stent implantation. Dual injection, which is critical for planning CTO PCI, demonstrated uh, a blunt proximal cap with a little branch originating at the proximal cap. The length of the occlusion appeared to be approximately 40 millimeters, and the distal vessel appeared to be of good quality, although there was some disease in the distal right coronary artery. In terms of collaterals, the main source was an epicardial collateral from the apical left anterior descending artery, but there appeared to also be some septal collaterals connecting from the LAD to the PDA. Therefore, our plan was to start with undergrade wire escalation, followed by ADR, then retrograde via septals, and retrograde via epicardials. And this is also the usual theme for learning CTO PCI. One starts for the simpler, less risky techniques, such as undergrade wire escalation, then going on to undergrade dissection reentry, then mastering the retrograde via septal, collaterals, and bypass grafts, which carry less risk or complications. And as the last stage is performing retrograde via epicardial collaterals. So similarly, in this case, we plan to go from simpler to more complex um, procedural attempts. We tried undergrade wire escalation. We used the Corset Pro microcatheter with several guide wires. As per standard escalation, we tried the filter XTA, followed by a guide second and a pilot 200. Unfortunately, the wires seemed to be in the subintimal space. We tried to use uh, a center cross microcatheter, which um, centers and provides extra support. We also had an unplugged guide. Nevertheless, we had a very hard time penetrating, and eventually we found that the guide wire was actually in the subminimal position, as shown by retrograde um, injection. Uh, given the difficulties we had with support, as well as subintimal guide wire position, we changed back to the um, retrograde approach, and we attempted to enter through the septal collaterals, but had a very difficult time entering those collaterals. And once again, it appeared that the main source was the apical LAD that was connecting via an epicardial collateral to the posterior descending artery and the distal RCA. So we changed back to an undergrade approach. We used a guide catheter extension, which provided some extra support, and we were then able to advance an undergrade knuckle guide wire to the mid right coronary artery. We advanced the Corsair Pro all the way to that area. And then we attempted to re-enter. Although the horizontal part is the most commonly used, we initially tried to re-enter in the vertical part just to minimize the extent of subintimal dissection. We used a double blind stick and strap technique in which uh, the stingray wire is advanced through both ports, the one between the two markers as well as the one proximal to the proximal marker. And then this stingray wire is removed and a pilot 200 is advanced trying to find the port that connects with the true lumen. So we did that. These are the two markers of the Stingray balloon. We were able to advance the wire through both proximal and between the two markers, but unfortunately, we were unable to enter the distal true lumen. We then used the so-called bobsled technique in which the Stingray balloon was advanced further down to see if we can re-enter in a different part of the vessel. But unfortunately, once again, we could not enter, and the reason was most likely the formation of subintimal hematoma. This part of the vessel before appeared to be fairly large caliber, but now it was almost completely obliterated, and this was likely because of subintimal hematoma formation. In cases like this, there's one technique called the straw technique, or subintimal transcatheter withdrawal, in which we attempt to aspirate the hematoma, 
and as a result decompress the compressed distal true lumen. This can be done either by aspirating directly from the stingray balloon per se or by advancing an over the wire balloon or a guide catheter extension and aspirating from that in attempts to decompress the hematoma. So we did this, we actually advanced an over the wire balloon and we aspirated through both the over the wire balloon as well as the stingray balloon, but once again we were unable to re enter. So this has been quite some time and multiple attempts. So we finally decided to attempt retrograde via the epicardial, which was planned to be our last resort. We used a caravel, which is a low profile microcatheter, and a SUO O3 guide wire. The SUO is actually the softest guide wire available in the market. It has a distal tip of 0.3 grams and is designed specifically for this very tortuous epicardial collaterals to be advanced through tortuosity. We advanced the caravel to the distal LAD and then we attempted wiring using the, C the SUO or three guide wire. We did multiple attempts turning and trying to take the bends. As you can see, the wire tended to enter through some small branches. But eventually, at one point, there was um, uh, taking those turns and release of the wire that straightened the, tor the tortuous collaterals and entered into the distal true lumen. This was confirmed by injection through the retrograde guide catheter because that's a key thing to do before advancing the microcatheter through the collateral. We were then able to advance the caravel through the collateral all the way to the distal and mid um, right coronary artery and then did the guide liner reverse card by, adv by advancing a guide liner over the undergrade guide catheter and advancing the retrograde guide wire and the retrograde microcatheter all the way into the undergrade guide catheter, which here has been changed, as you can see, to a JR from an unplugged one. The JR is easier to use in terms of externalization. We wanted to remove the retrograde gear soon because um, of tension of the epicardial collateral and straightening of, straightening of the epicardial collateral. And the best way to do this is by using a dual lumen microcatheter such as the twin pass. The dual lumen is advanced with, um, over the externalized guide wire through the monorail lumen. And then the dual lumen has an over the wire lumen that goes all the way from the back, from the front, from the front end all the way to the back end. And then over this lumen, we then advanced a guide wire in the undergrade direction. This is the twin pass advanced over the retrograde guide wire on the monorail lumen. And then we were able to advance an undergrade Samurai RC guide wire into the right posterior descending artery. And we then removed the retrograde gear and confirmed that there was no injury of the epicardial collateral. We then placed several stents all the way from the distal to the proximal right coronary, given the extensive dissection we had and hematoma in the distal right coronary artery. And then at the end, we uh, made sure that there was no injury once again in the epicardial collateral. And we achieved a nice result with a T3 flow in the right coronary artery. There was some residual disease into the posterior descending artery, but there was excellent flow and we decided to not place any further stents. About 400 of condors were used, pretty long fluoroscopy time, close to 5 gray radiation dose, so there was clearly a long complex case but uh, um, overall we stayed under five gray. There are several potential lessons from this case. The first one is, as in many CTO cases, that change is very important. If the first or second or third strategies don't work, then one can keep on looking for other strategies, other ways to recanalize the occlusion. And we finally went from the less uh, risky strategies, undergrade wire escalation, ADR, retrograde receptors to retrograde through epicardials, which were finally the successful strategy in this case. We also saw that subindimal hematoma is one of the major limitations of undergrade dissection reentry. One can try to decompress it using the straw technique, but sometimes reentry may still fail. And in those cases, retrograde can be a solution to allow successful recanalization. Another advantage of retrograde in this scenario is allows staying into the true lumen for a large part of this um, hematoma area. 
therefore minimizing the loss of side branches, we can see that nearly all, or if not all, of the side branches, the marginals from the right coronary were maintained. And finally, in cases of retrograde externalization, when we don't want to stand over the externalized guide wire, but want to remove it and use an undergrade wire, one way to do this is by using a dual lumen microcatheter like the twin pass to exchange for an undergrade guide wire and stand over the undergrade guide wire. Thank you.